fights just to waste utility. It was uh, canceling information. Couple of smokes one way along B. They also got the dart out early, but here comes the push towards B here. I'll talk about it later. Shots finally coming through, and a fatality is finally on board. It's FaZe who strikes first, but an immediate clap back from 100 Thieves. Ethan finds two kills with the Ghost and a nade perfectly placed to force them out from behind yellow. You've now got a post-plant scenario with a damaged target in Rockus. Corey by his side, no utility left remaining for the Rays. Going to have to get a couple kills to pull those paint shells back out. And look at the positions currently set up. You've got this Lurk coming in from under tube. So they're just going to be playing this slow. There's the first shot coming out from the Sheriff long range. Somehow Steel's not necessarily connecting, but he's got them exactly where he wants them. That puts Rockus on the other side of the wall, unable to help out his teammate. And ultimately the round goes the way of 100 Thieves. As they go for spike placement. Over on the B site, there is a recon dart that's sent out. It's not going to spot anything. They're breaking through the ice wall as well, so they can come in from tube. You've got Corey. He's currently jiggling back from spawn. Doesn't spot one out, and that's Nitro striking first. Hiko spots one, just sees the hip, and now has to be careful. Down to 65 HP, knows they're close. He's relying heavily on his teammate at distance. The SMG not working out so well. A slow orb's going to go down. There's a smoke coming in as well, but he's not sticking the spike. He swings wide. Zachary will end wow. up clutching the round out for FaZe as they steal one away from 100 Thieves to keep things tied up at one. Watching for any pushes towards mid. So you don't really have anybody playing towards belt. So FaZe recognizes that, and for two rounds in a row, they push forward for that. That's a player you're going to have to watch out for is Asuna. He's punished by Baby Bay again in an aggressive position. But let's not forget, there's the Sage Res. So there you go. That's a nice little advantage. That's going to cause a peek out coming in from the knives of Baby Bay, who's found now three kills on the round. His target was brought back to life, resuscitated with the Sage CPR. But he's got no interest in allowing that player to survive any longer. Ethan has made it onto B. A nice little smoke to give him a bit of a one-way onto Corey. The knives are still oh out, boy. though, as Baby Bay is looking for the ace. Still has some smokes available. Goes for the swing! It's Baby Bay with the ace! Again, Sorry, Baby they Bay. are aggressive. Look at this. A-side a presence. They're just pushing so aggressively. You can see that punish from Baby Bay. Marv got one in mid as well. They're giving B site, but they're kind of shifting their resources around. So they play a little bit further back on B, but a way further up on A. That's what allows 100 Thieves to get into these positions, but FaZe is not allowing them to do anything with it. And most importantly, they left the spike at home. Yep. Can't leave that one behind as Marv will make it look easy with the 4K associated with that Sage play. Now, in that time, Steel has crept up slowly but surely onto Sa- Oh my gosh, never mind. Yep. Baby Bay is feeling it right now. He's on a whole different level, and that's what allows that pickoff to happen. You hear the port coming out as well. This is just incredibly well read from FaZe. As 100 Thieves has their backs against the wall, they have to make a move at this point. A paranoia comes through, but they can't really gain much space off of it. Rockus is hiding currently inside his smoke. As it fades, Hiko will drop. Wow. Baby Bay with another multi-kill round. This when they're on a half buy, right? There was a rifle that they picked up from Baby Bay. A couple of them still have pistols. They're just confident that they might be able to take this round because they have the showstopper from the res. So they want to use that to clear space. And it works. Oh no, it doesn't work. Okay. Bays have turned things around. You've got Zachary, who's full W. He has zero chill. They spot one towards Baze. They know the last player is on high. They're going to try and tap the spike to bait him out of position. It's Steel. Goes for, actually, it looked like he was going to go for a reload or maybe even some utility, but gets gunned down through the wall as he goes up the ropes into opposite tube. Baze, they had a massive numbers disadvantage, and yet still, somehow... They end up on top of the round. Positions, Asuna drops off Maze just in time. Satchel Pack going inside that dark cover. Trying to get up onto the high ground. It's now down to Rockus. They know there's one up top, but there's just not much that can be done. 100 Thieves, they may have lost some early resources with that aggressive play, but they turned it back around. Zachary has already come out from heaven from distance. Great damage coming out, but it's actually nice Hiko, the clutch god, delivering. Now, Ethan is close, and oh, Ethan could get this timing right, and it could actually work out so incredibly well. It's all about patience right now for Ethan, but Ethan actually decides to stay low. Now, that's something that's going to produce a problem. 
It's the I Killjoy ult being used by Steel to potentially keep them at bay, but it's down to just one player remaining. Now, as the lockdown comes through, there's a wall. Ethan's on the other side of it. Ethan will be able to get one kill, but can't do much to stop it. And it's FaZe who take another round when it looked promising there. for 100 Thieves yet again. Bay was able to retake on the B site and find an ace no less. So now that the blades are out yet again, swirling through the air, ready to find home and some fleshy targets. We'll see if he can make some space first. It's the op to do it. Now goes for the swing. No dice. It will be 100 Thieves getting themselves back on the scoreboard. That's the reason why they're playing so aggressive. Yep, it also yep. kind of makes things a little bit more interesting, though, when they switch to the attacking side is how do they watch the back end? Like right. with a Cypher or Killjoy, even though Cypher's weak on this map, you have that capability. Flying into the site is Asuna, but there's that player, Baby Bay, with the up on high. A kill comes in towards the end. It's going to be Ethan, and he has been really heating up. Yep. It's down to a one-on-two. Spike is down on the site. Can't quite tap the shots into the skull of Marv. 9-3, your halftime score. Nice nade coming in. That'll force them to the backside of sites. A big fat paranoia to lead them in as well. Now there's a smoke down that Zachary charges through. And they're using the Al drone as well, but it doesn't clear back site. It actually clears the other direction, and that's what allows this to happen. Ethan, even with the dart in his side as the drone turned back, it doesn't matter. 100 Thieves pick up a huge, flawless pistol round to kick off the second half. It's coming out. Look at the damage dealt to their Sage, who's now stuck around the corner. Nitro has to go for the cell field, and it won't even put him back at full HP. And as he swings, it's a double kill for Marv. Corey as well getting involved in the action, and that's... Basically, the round over yet again. Kiko, the clutch god, what's he got for us? Shock darts coming out, but it's all up to him. The crosshair placement is choice, but Hiko flushed out by the nade. It's a 1v3 shock dart around the corner, but falling back to his original position. Has to be aware of the bullets that are pouring out through two. Goes for a recon dart, gets destroyed before a pulse can come out. The shots are already coming through the wall right on the money. Phase at double digits and spreading the gap further here with 11. This they're gonna wall off the underside of tube and they're just gonna charge for a split A. And it works out wow. so well. Poor Asuna has been getting bullied this game as they just charge in. Baby Bay is feeling it right now. Shot after shot to the dome of members from 100 Thieves. And now it's all up to Hiko who used the ult to try to slow things down and it didn't really seem to make a difference. With just a classic left, I mean, what what can you even do? Tube is walled off. Wall. Yeah. Underside's <laughs> walled off. You've only got a ghost, so really, what are you going to do? Nice That's... shots coming out on the barb, at least. <laughs> and another one. Hold on. We've seen him win rounds like this before, but it would be the most impressive by far if he was able to somehow pull it off. The positions are going to make it difficult, though, when they do. 12 rounds for FaZe. Both off the back of the ops held by Steel and Nitro. Good old, good old baby bait dash into a player, as I mentioned before. Exactly. Ethan's still on site. Woo! He has been on one. Feeling it right now as the top performer for 100 Thieves has to watch his flank, though. As there's players on each side of Maze, does have support from Asuna, who's in position to make sure that doesn't happen. That's the kill coming in from Asuna onto Zachary. Last player standing as Rock is taking damage inside dark cover, looking to escape. Shock Dart's almost right where it needs to be, but it's the round for 100 Thieves. The question is, how long can they keep this going? No disrespect to Exet, but Immortals is scary right now. Exet's yep. been playing well as well. I'm not trying to take anything away from them, but based on the way we've seen Immortals play more recently, that is kind of terrifying. Yep. Here we've got a fast play onto the A site that seems to be working out. It's paying off early at least. As you can see, the pick come through the ops not really working out so well. Marved again with a heroic performance as the Sage trying to keep things more manageable, but no, goes up on top of the wall to play an aggressive play, drops the spike, but it's all gonna fall onto Steel, who's now on the flank with an op, not exactly an ideal weapon. And the first shot comes through, trying to stop the spike placement. And now they know where he's at. He's got a full kit though, right? Nano Swarm could maybe flush one player out. There you go. He's gonna try to get Rockus out of the way. He can put the turret down, but Baby B has the off angle. The turret doesn't go wide enough. 
to clear out that position. Wants to peek for it, has the inkling that a player could be on high, but it doesn't matter. GG's are called as FaZe picks up the first map in this series, and they make it look somewhat easy. It's a 13-6 yeah. win. Spike is now taking down as Marv is trying to play that false plant for the team. It all comes down to, once again, Hiko. If he could clutch this time a three versus one against two players that's been popping off, and that's Corey and also BB Bay. But it doesn't work out. Corey gets the kill. First round comes in for FaZe, moving in from Hookah inside for FaZe. And they already flanked behind towards that spawn, so BB Bay is at the point. There's that first, but still gets the wide swing. Immediately gets traded out as they are pushing in for FaZe. But now 100 Thieves has the one-minute advantage. Asuna waiting for this spike to plant. He's waiting for the push through the smoke. It's Rockus gets punished for it. Only a four-on-one remaining with Zachary. A self flash, a first headshot with the Spectre. Picks up the Vandal at 30 HP but they are closing in on him. You have the shock guards, the peak from Hiko at heaven, and 100 Thieves puts the first point on the scoreboard. He's out, they don't have much left to try to hold this B side. So Steel's gonna have to body block, play that contact, but he gets pinged out. There's that showstopper, but under the window and also close towards Shed, they catch FaZe off guard, and 100 Thieves are now in the lead with two players versus, or two players ahead rather, and Rockus jumps out a window, gets the, gets the kill onto Hiko, but gets traded out there by Asuna. So they've tied things up on a 2-2 scoreline break. So they're gonna explode into the A side for phase now. That nade forces the hand of Baby Bay as well to dash in further. What do they do with it? Oh, good God. Hiko with the ult, it they just all that. falls apart. <laughs> Hiko gets a triple kill with the Hunter's Fury. Be incredibly difficult to deal with. Ethan sees that fault line come through, decides to port out of the way. Baby Bay in the meantime gets the punish, goes to move up further, somehow able to drop Ooh, Ethan as well, who is back side of the APC. Sight's lost and it's a massive advantage currently. We've got Steel on the lurk, but everything's falling apart. And it's the round win for FaZe. So he's dropped very low on HP, has to be careful, needs some help. Flying into position is Baby Bay, knows there's one still on sight. The save comes in from Hiko to prevent the fatality. The rocket would have gotten a post-mortem, but it still is down to one here for FaZe. A 1v2 as the hat comes out, not going to be able to react in time due to that hat getting tossed out. And it's now down to the one-on-one, -on -one. and Hiko just goes for it. Who's still here, by the way. Yeah. Sitting back towards elbow. I love what Baby Bay is trying to do. Dodging some recon darts as well. There's an ult coming out the Rolling Thunder. As Baby Bay tries to push into position, Asuna dodges the charges. The flashes are still coming out. And now it's down to one. It's Nitro. The player who originally was playing B-side defense is somehow the last one alive on a B-side take. It's set up right now. There's <laughs> so many players trying to come in from Puka for 100 Thieves. As they start to make their way out, they don't really have the greatest of hardware. And that's going to allow them to line some up. Remaining. Steal with the Bucky, though. Able to find two pumps, but not going to get a third out. Not going to find a third kill on the round. Both used to get them some space. I might scare the members of 100 Thieves. Corey spots one up on the rafters no over towards way. heaven. How does that work? Ethan just sticks around a little too long, but it's okay. Backup is here. Support has arrived. And now it's all up to Marv. Spikes down on the site, and that tiny, tiny little head, short. Planted. One enemy remaining. Ethan gets there so fast, and they're just not prepared for it. Now there's a smoke going down as well. Rockus is going to play inside it. Has to time this one perfectly. Does have a recon dart. Doesn't want to give away position. Ethan's got the read. Got one in showers, one other towards Short and Steel and Asuna, respectively. It's going to come down to these early duels. How successful are they? And that one works out pretty nicely for them as Ethan gets the execution, point blank range, and now they're going to peel. So now you're going to see the fallback and go back through the oh, portal no. to A. But the problem is they lost the players on A. So both players, A, Steel and Asuna, who were supposed to pick up the kills, didn't. And now there's a fat paranoia coming into the showers. Everything is falling apart. Yeah, the Lurk was coming in for a steal, now there's no time. They're gonna have to rush out and show themselves in. Now with no time left, it's Zachary that gets the last kill. And Nitro lining up a slow left. orb. They're gonna be moving in fast. There's the nade coming out. Baby Bay, again with just a marshal, inflicting serious damage. And that nade slows them down so much. They rely heavily on Cory, but with just an SMG against rifles, it's difficult to do much. Oh, Baby Bay again, the marshal. 
Nico not able to react in time to Marv's presence as the trade kill does come through. And now you've got Baby Bay swapping over to the Vandal. Wow. That is well held from phase. Sure, they surrender the spike plant, but three players survive on a bonus. Question. Yeah, if I'm looking at it from this overhead view, it seems as though it's uh, going to be back left. in his hands. There you go. So he's watching it from a nice angle and lands that one onto Nitro. And that's why that matters. Whether or not we were going to see that cross shot. Now he has to be careful as there's players all over the place. He doesn't have Tailwind, so he has to go back him. through to get away. He was spotted by the camera, has to remove the dart. Sight's been lost, and they're going to go for a spike placement. Baby Bay has the knives out, though. Oh, nice my God. quick flick coming in from Baby Bay. Wants to get another, oh, and he no. does. Baby Bay finds four of the last players on 29 HP, fault lined and rocketed. Ethan trying to survive, but can't again. Baby Bay with the knife work. Holy. But now switching over to the defensive side, it's become the Baby Bay show. You can see just how impactful Baby Bay can be. Again, aggressive play. The portal play coming in from Marv, backed by the paranoia. Wow. <laughs> Asuna and Steel didn't stand a chance, and a port to get away as well. Yeah, incredibly that, that's well amazing. played. That's amazing. TV towards fun. That's just the most frustrating thing for 100 Thieves right now because they don't have an opportunity to trade. Now Rockets gets another kill here, and Faze is looking great for series point. Hundred Thieves One enemy remaining. struggling against this fast-paced played by Faze in the last two maps. Ethan again, the last player standing. There's just too much waiting for him. So what does 100 Thieves do? They try to go for a fast play towards A. The rocket's been pulled. It might actually work out here against this close target. No, it's actually Baby Bay, who was a little further away. Steals now back sight. Marv just to keep his head on a swivel. Takes damage from the back, trying to check the other side. And it's a two on three. Numbers for 100 Thieves. They hear the player coming through from showers. Ethan's not going to miss that one. Nation. I think they had maximum like two ARs into that. Rockus drops into sight, catches Hiko, and suddenly it becomes more manageable. He knows there's a player close, and oh no, not like this. He knows he's got a target right around the corner, but it's Ethan with the swing. They didn't clear this left side with that drone, did they? I think They're maybe they it. spotted it. It's yeah. possible. Yeah. Now the dart goes into the portal. No. That's unfortunate. So Corey's able to dodge the damage, and now he's just going to hunker down and wait for the peak. Little does he know there's a player currently sitting on the other side. The shock dart will open up the doors. That's what allows the nade to go in. No! It's blocked. It's like <laughs> mini golf and the windmill just goes around at the perfect point. Shutting out his opportunity to get that nade. And now he's calling in for backup. He needs some help. Tries to boom bot out before his help arrives. And that'll be his demise. The fun little kind of turn of events over there on A-Long. Yeah. He's still becomes a two. still in sight, though. Yeah, it still becomes a 2v2 on either side of the maps as well. So with losing the, the healer at the beginning could make things difficult for 100 Thieves, but thankfully for them, how they capitalize on a 4-4, they're still at full HP, but the Rolling Thunder. Now, they did get that ult orb, but what do they do with it? Hiko has the ult. Probably wants to use that for post-plant. Now he has to use it on the push, realizing they need to get into the site. There's 12 seconds left. They still haven't secured a plant. Zachary just wants to go for the swing, no. but it's actually Baby Bay to drop him, and now the round is falling apart. It's going to be FaZe who go through as the number one seed coming out of Challengers 3 with a big win over 100 Thieves. Congratulations to FaZe Clan.